God bless you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I am extremely excited by his grace that we are here together. Uh, I will not be live for a long time, but I wanted to start something that I believe that uh, the Lord will use to bless us. He will use it uh, to elevate us uh, and he will use it to transform our lives. So I want you to be ready. I want you to be prepared because I believe that this is going to take us to the place that God has ordained for us. So I want you to let somebody know that the prophet is live and I believe that our lives will never be the same again. Every chance and opportunity we get to be before God, uh, it is an opportunity to grow and to change. Uh, it is the transformation that God is seeking. He's not just seeking to give us eternal life, but the Lord desireth with all his heart to cause us to become like him the more. So if you're not changing for the better, then you are actually digressing. You're not actually increasing. And the desire of God is for us to increase and it's uh, for us to become every single thing that he has ordained for us to be. So I, I, I'm trying to teach such an um, explosive word as quickly as I can. And also there's a lot of people that have, uh, have been asking me to uh, do another deliverance night. Uh, I think by the grace of God, I will let you guys know uh, when it will be. And I believe that God is going to help us. Amen. Uh, the Lord Jesus will definitely help us. It is his will for us to prosper, to become everything that he wants us to be. Especially God does not want us to be under demonic uh, bondage. It is never the will of God. Yes. Amen. So I want to speak about preparing for new seasons. Amen. Preparing for new seasons. Amen. Now, I want you to share this because I won't be on for long, but I'm going to be teaching about preparing for new seasons. Preparing for new seasons, what it means for you. Uh, and and uh, not only what it means to you, why you need to know this. You see, many times... I have noticed this with Christians, we who love the Lord. We have a lot of weaknesses, but this one is a dangerous one. We love when we want something new in our lives. We call it a season. When we need to grow, we say it's a season of growth. Some people like to jump from church to church and they will say, it is my season to be in this church, it is my season to be in that church. But you have to understand that the change of seasons is not a change of physical location. It is about a spiritual positioning about what God is about to do next. It is not about, okay, you know, I, I am tired of this place. I need something new. So we label it a season. That is not what God calls a season. A season to God is completely different from what men uh, understand it to be. Some of you may have gone ahead of the season of God. Some of you may be behind the season of God. Some of you may be in the midst of the season of God and you don't even know it. So it is necessary by the Spirit of God to understand not only how to prepare for seasons, yeah. but above all, what is a season? Amen. Is everybody here? Yeah. This is why God himself has labeled his season as the morning and the night. Let me explain it to you. Notice, in the beginning of the world, of our world, mm -hmm. when God created everything, yes. it started with the morning and the evening, the evening and the morning. Mm -hmm. It was still in the genesis of mankind. God never spoke. He spoke about the coming Messiah. His son will come in the flesh to deliver us and to save us. 
But in those days, it was never called the end of days. If anything, it was the genesis, the beginning of days. But when the Lord Jesus came, the Lord Jesus came to announce that the end of days are upon us. But that was 2,000 years ago. Jesus told us, listen, when you begin to see this, know that you are not just in the end of days, know that you are in the end times. Meaning you are in the last hour before his great coming. So God himself has positioned his seasons differently, meaning that you may be in the, like an example is this, a lot of people will be left when the rapture comes. Why will, be, why will they be left? The Bible says in the, last, in, the, in the last days it will be like in the days of Noah. Some will be getting married, some will be given to married, marriage and there will be drinking, there will be people making merry. And like a thief in the night, notice what Jesus says, like a thief in the night. It means that it will not look like Jesus is coming. You see, people think that it will be so chaotic that everybody will be on their knees praying. No, 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 no. Weddings will be going on, parting will be going on, things will be happening. And like a thief, you see, a thief doesn't announce himself. Yeah. It's only people who have prepared for thieves that will not be caught unawares. So a lot of people think it will look like uh, 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 so, so dark and gloom and it means, no, no, no. Jesus said, when you see these signs, know that I am about to come, but I will come like a thief in the night. I will come like a thief in the night. A thief doesn't announce himself. There will be chaos. That's why he said, you will hear of wars and rumors of war. It means that many people will not in, be in the places that those things are happening. Yeah. You will hear of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not you will see it. <laughs> Big difference. Yeah. Now watch this. I want us to read this. And this will help you. This will help you. Let's go to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 2 verse 21. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 21. And verse 21. Verse 21. That is yes. Daniel chapter 2, 21. Mm -hmm. And he changeth the times and the seasons. Uh, notice, what does it mean to change times and seasons? When the times change, when we used to tell our parents, like, this is not like in your days, times have changed. It means cultures have transformed. So whenever the cultures change, you know that the season is about to change. Wow. Are you capturing this? That's powerful. Whenever cultures begin to change, you have to understand that the season is about to change. Come on. What announces the change of season is the transformation of the culture of people. That's good. Amen. That's really good. Is somebody listening to this? We're listening. Is somebody listening to this? I think it went over their heads, Papa. I'm not going to lie. Notice, mm -hmm. if you look at the 70s, right. you look at the 80s, right. you look at the 90s, yes. you look at the 2000s, you look at now we are in the 2000s and 20s. Mm -hmm. Every 10 years the world changes, the cultures of men change. But it is so gradual, like somebody who may have died in the early 90s. If they see the year 2020, they will be surprised in the things that are allowed. Is somebody getting this? We're catching it. They will be shocked. In the 90s, 80s, people were a little more respectful to elders. Now it's not like that. There was a decency. People are not as exposing themselves as people do now. Yeah, true. So not only somebody from the 90s that died if he's here presently, not only will they be in total culture shock, mm -hmm. it will be difficult for them to relate. Yeah. 
with the people. This is why leaders who are older, they always love to have young people around them because it gives them a connection to the next, not only times, but to the season that is about to come in. Jesus. When you're preparing for a new season, it is not just a matter of prayer. It's a matter of examining the culture of people. It will tell you the kind of season you're about to go into. And because you have the understanding of the season that is coming, you will know what to pray for. You will know how to position yourself so that you may prosper in the new place and in the new season that is to come. No one prepares for winter by wearing summer clothes. In the summer, people may look at you like you're crazy. When you're buying winter clothes, they will be busy wearing, uh, buying summer clothes and all that. But winter is coming. You see, people who are preparing for the summer, in the winter, they're already buying summer clothes. That makes a lot of sense. When you're in the winter and you begin to buy coats, you're already late. You already missed the season. If you even look at Fashion Week and all these things, they advert, the, the, season, the next season mm -hmm. always comes out before the season. It doesn't come out during the season. Mm. So you can't prepare during. But only no, you can't prepare during. If you're preparing dur during, you already left. Mm -hmm. Please read it again. Read, read this quick again, if That's you can. Daniel 2, 21. Mm -hmm. And he changeth the times and the seasons. Uh -huh. He removeth, removeth kings and setteth up kings. Mm -hmm. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Okay, leave this in the screen for me. He changes the times and the seasons. When the times and the seasons change, powers also change. Mm. Shifts, okay, okay. When the times and the seasons change, those who are in charge also are changed. There will always be a position of a king, but it will not be the same king. Jesus, that, that's deep. Some of you are praying for a new season, yet the person who is keeping your blessing has not died yet. Uh, maybe that's too much for people. Nah, it's, it's power. Do you realize Jesus' season could not happen as long as John the Baptist was alive? You're saying something, Papa. Yeah. Jesus understood that the moment John is out of the way, then Jesus' full, his ministry will come to its full potential. When powers are changing, It is a great opportunity for those who will be aware of it earlier in order to be part of the shift of power. I feel like I'm talking to myself. I wish somebody would understand what I'm saying. You see, when we were preparing for our time, not only as a church, as a ministry, a lot of people thought I was out of my mind. But when the time came, the shift came, mm -hmm. it was so obvious, yes. Yes. our position. Right. And a lot of people who had our place that were not prepared, they were taken out of power and other people entered into power. Mm -hmm. So let me, let, let me read this again. And he changes the times and the season. He removes kings and set it up kings. Ah, my scriptures disappeared. And he sets up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise. So before you're given wisdom, you need to be wise. Come on. A wise person and a person with wisdom are two different people. A wise person is a person who is on pursuit, is sharp to observe, to look, to understand. 
You see, some people are trying to do crypto now, but the people who started in crypto have already prospered. Right, right. Now, anybody who is entering, uh, you are most likely losing. You are not winning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that money looking funny. So the wise were the ones that were given wisdom because they noticed the trend is changing. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's really good. They noticed the trend is changing. Mm -hmm. They realized something. They realized like, okay, the financial industry is changing. Things are shifting. It will be wise for me to look into this new avenue that people have been ready for. There was a guy, I, I, there was a... There was an African-American man that was telling people to buy uh, uh, Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin, yeah. buy big Bitcoin. Right. And people didn't listen to him. The guy is over $300 million rich now. And he spent maybe $100. Wow. There was another guy who bought, uh, uh, who pizza. bought, he bought pizza with how many? Uh, ten. With 10 Bitcoins. Mm -hmm. That bit, 10 Bitcoins now is worth how much? Too much. It's a lot of money. The shares are about like 51,000 right now. Okay. So. For one Bitcoin. For yeah. one. So you imagine he bought pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you see, no, notice this. He gives wisdom unto the wise. Yes. Yes. Sharp people. Mm. A wise, you see, when people say you are a wise guy, what are they trying to say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are a sharp guy who thinks when you know everything. So God needs you to be wise. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're wise, he will give you wisdom. You see, Jacob was a wise guy. Yeah. So because of being wise, he was given wisdom. You see, as Christians, we were supposed to be, and we are supposed to be on the forefront of innovation, of trends. We are supposed to be aware of these things. We are not supposed to be caught by surprise. Right. Now notice this, and knowledge to them that know understanding. And knowledge to them that know understanding. Somebody cannot have knowledge unless you have understanding. An example is this, if I want to grow in, in knowledge, I must have the understanding of how to acquire knowledge. What is that understanding? First of all, I have to learn to speak less and listen more. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who talk too much, right. so wisdom cannot be downloaded into them, so they remain dry. Yeah. Yeah, and talking is not only with your mouth. If you're always thinking when somebody's trying to teach something, tell you something, you have already missed the point. Yeah. There is understanding in the human capacity and there is understanding that is given spiritual one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Somebody who has understanding, it is easy for spiritual knowledge to come to them. But before you get to spiritual knowledge, you must first of all be able to obtain natural knowledge. Because you cannot use spiritual things unless you have the understanding of men so that you can use it in a way that will help men. You will notice hyper-spiritual people are never a benefit to men. They're dangerous. If anything, they become more dangerous. They are not useful, but they are dangerous. So hear me by the Spirit of God. Without a vision that is aligned with the times, you cannot prepare for the future. You cannot prepare for the seasons. It means that you have to be able to see visions, not only in the spiritual capacity, but you have to have the ability to predict. Listen to me. You have to be able to predict where the trends will go. So that when you pray, you can receive what will sustain you in the next season. The Pharisees missed Jesus because they were not prepared. Right. Yeah. You must have the capacity, listen to me, you must have the capability and the capacity to see visions, Amen. to see your family, to see yourself. 
as the times are changing, where will you be? Many of you are praying, you are expecting God to reveal to you where the world is going. Yet this is in the human capacity. It is not in God's capacity. It is not in his duty to come and tell you this. This is up to you. Daniel was in Babylon for a long time. When he noticed the timeline that the fathers had given them of their exit from Babylon, he began to pray and fast so that he may understand how this thing will come to pass. Many of you are just waiting for God to do it, but you have no vision. How many churches have been left behind when there is innovation? Streaming changed. Streaming changed. Changed everything. But there are men of God that did not foresee that. Many of them made decisions based off the fear of the pandemic. They never saw beyond the pandemic. Some of them did not see beyond people not being in church. They feared and downsized. Some feared and closed church and they just do streaming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, true, true. Some understood yes. that men will always need interaction. Amen. Let us combine both worlds. Yes. Let us stream also. Yes. Let us also have physical attendance. Yes. Let's work the two of them because this will always be necessary. Are you seeing the visions based on the fear or are you seeing the visions based on the understanding of where the world is going? Mm -hmm. What are your decisions based on? Yeah, true. True. As a child of God, mm -hmm. as somebody ordained by God, as somebody chosen by God, Is somebody getting this? Yes, yes, yes. If you can't see that, you'll be a miserable person praying for breakthrough, open doors, yet you miss the season. Even, even business people yeah. even people in the world understand this truth. They understand that whenever there is a problem, it's an opportunity. There are people who knew nothing about masks but made more money with masks. After they had made billions with masks, then you saw some people also starting to sell masks on the street. The trend is already gone. Right, right. That business is already secured because they did not foresee. Mm -mm -mm. Some people took advantage of the sanitizing, uh, uh, the hand sanitizers and all these things. That trend passed. Children of God, you have to be able to see what is to come. If you cannot see, if you cannot see where the world is going, your prayer will be in vain. Yes. So, people that are so against the metaverse right now are missing an opportunity. Big time. Before God. Big time. A hundred percent. A hundred million percent. Is it fully functional like it should be? Not yet. Mm -hmm. But will it be? A hundred percent. You can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. You see, you cannot fight times. You cannot fight the times and the seasons. Come on. Even nature, 
even nature. Animals can tell seasons, yet they don't have a calendar. They know when to gather so that when it is winter, they can hibernate. They know how to prepare themselves for that time. They comprehend how this thing works. Ah, but children of God are dull. Start being more observant. Can you remove that? Uh, there's a full online. Yeah. Begin to watch. Begin to observe. Prayerfully. So that God may tell you what is next. If this is not done, if this is not done, the season will come. You see, we don't pray for a new season because seasons will change whether you pray or not. You don't need to pray for a change of season. That is happening anyway. But will you be part of the change? Will you prosper when the change comes? Dang. That's, that's something. This is what God is seeking. So that we may save souls. So that we may bring people to the knowledge of Christ. If we don't do this, we will be missing out. There's this person, um, Luke Lo Bandi. That's a Muslim idiot. Remove him. <laughs> I don't like foolishness. Can you see him? Yeah, I got him. Yeah, t take take that fool mm -hmm. off. We don't tolerate the spirit of the Antichrist here. We don't play that game. No, we do not. So. Tonight, start looking. Be knowledgeable of what is happening so that you understand where the world is going. May God bless you. I love you. Jesus loves you more. And I will see you tomorrow. God's blessings.
Take me to your secret place 